So you're looking for your next great read, but you don't really want to commit to a lengthy series right now. I got you covered. Today, I am recommending five standalone fantasy novels that you need to read. And I'm covering a wide range of books here, from a dark academia filled with conspiracy, to a lyrical prose story about mythical creatures, to a classic whimsical book, to a epic philosophical story that's filled with love and conflict, as well as a dark historical horror fantasy that's set during the Black Death. That's right, these books are all very different from each other, but they are all incredible, and I recommend every single one of them. These novels pack all the punch without having to commit to a series, and you should read all of them. Before getting into it, the channel has been blessed with a sponsor. This video is sponsored by Into the AM. You guys probably know Into the AM is a longtime supporter of the channel, and they're one of my favorite companies to work with. I am a huge fan of their clothing. This is one of the new shirts they sent me. Which, as always, I love their designs and like the quality of their shirts is so good. Katie is always telling me how soft they are. They're also just very comfortable. This one's another one of their new tees, and it's one of my favorites. I love the design on the back. They also have a selection of tank tops that are perfect for the summer. And I also specifically asked if they could send me another pair of their all-day pants, because the last ones they sent me are some of my favorite pants I own, and they did. They sent me another pair, so I am so happy, because like I said, honestly some of the most comfortable pants you're ever gonna wear. And and right now, Into the AM is running a massive 4th of July sale that's running from June 27th until July 8th, and it's 30% off site-wide, and you get an extra 10% off by using my link in the description. So make sure to use the link, stay inspired, level up your self-expression by checking out some awesome graphic tees. All their clothing is just so comfortable, so high quality. Make sure to use the link, and a huge thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring the video. Okay, you might know that The Sword of Kaigen is one of my favorite fantasy standalone novels ever, and somehow ML Wong has done it again. She's written another masterpiece of a novel with Blood Over Bright Haven. Guys, this book is so good. Now, if you did like Sword of Kaigen, it's, you're not necessarily going to love this book as well. They are very different. I love them both, but for very different reasons. But together, they both show the versatility of ML Wong's writing style, and I feel like if she keeps on writing masterpieces like this, then she's going to be one of the top fantasy authors in no time. Even though this book has had pretty much overwhelmingly positive reactions, it's still kind of under the radar. I don't really see a lot of people talking about it, so I'm going to try to recommend it to you, and you better read it. Magic has made the city of Tyrin an industrial utopia, but magic is a cost, and the collectors have come calling. Blood Over Bright Haven is a standalone dark academia novel set in the city of Tehran, an industrial utopia powered by magic. The story follows Siona, an orphan and brilliant academic who becomes the first woman admitted to the High Magistry. However, after finally clawing her way up the ranks to become a High Mage, she finds that her challenges have just begun. Siona, along with a janitor named Tommel, end up uncovering this secret conspiracy that could basically change the practice of magic forever. Siona is a character that really struggles to prove herself in this world that's very deeply entrenched in sexism, all the while uncovering the true cost of this utopia. Now, I will say that the themes here are not very subtle. This is clearly a book about xenophobia, sexism, progress at the at the cost of like environmental damage and religious dogma and so much more. Uh, now sometimes I prefer books that are a little bit more subtle uh, with their approach, but I do think this book uh, handles it all very well. It handles a lot of deep topics, uh, and also it has a complex cast of characters that are very flawed. I mean, Siona is kind of an unlikable character, to be honest. She's pretty much driven by ambition and ego more than anything else, and she makes a lot of mistakes, and she's not exactly that likable, but this makes her a very interesting character to follow. You know, I haven't actually read that much Dark Academia. I love the concept of it, I really enjoyed this book, so let me know if you have any recommendations. If you're at all interested in Blood Over Bright Haven, 
I highly recommend checking it out. It is filled with mystery and tragedy, and like I said, it's one of the best books that I read in 2024. Next up, we have The Forgotten Beast of Eld by Patricia A. McKillop. Now, this is a book that holds up so, so well. I can't help but recommend it because it has been published nearly 50 years ago, I believe, uh, and even though the genre has changed and advanced so, so much, the Forgotten Beasts of Eld still, it, it has stand the test of time. It is a beautiful story. It is still surprisingly emotional, and it's a book that I urge everyone to read. I think, I think everyone needs to give this book a chance. The prose is some of the best that I have read. It's a very lyrical story in a way. What is it about? Well, it tells the story of Sybil, a powerful sorceress who lives alone on a mountain with magical creatures. And when a man brings her a baby to raise, Sybil is drawn into a world of love, betrayal, and powerful struggles. As she navigates these challenges, she must confront her own inner demons and decide the fate of the Forgotten Beasts. I really loved hearing about all the different mythical creatures in this book, and they all kind of have like some personality to them, which is really interesting. Uh, but Sybil is such a fascinating character. She's a character that starts off incredibly cold, uh, then she kind of warms up when she starts to love this child. Um, and yeah, like I said, you need to read it. It is such a beautiful book. I feel like not many people read this book anymore, and it's such a brilliant standalone. I feel like there needs to be some better editions of this book. This is probably my favorite edition, but there's some there's some pretty bad editions of this novel, and I don't know why there isn't some, like, I think there needs to be some, like, new, illustrated, beautiful deluxe edition. Especially if you're a fan of Robin Hobb's work or Patrick Rothfuss's, then I highly recommend reading The Forgotten Beast of Eld. The Lions of Al Rasan by Guy Gavriel K. I need to talk about Guy Gavriel K a lot more in my videos because he is honestly one of the best fantasy authors out there and he has written so many incredible standalones. Easily I could have mentioned a different book in this video like Tigana or A Brightness Long Ago. Insert another novel by K. He has written so many amazing standalone novels. He's also written the, uh, f how do you say it? The fi Fiona Fionavar, Fionavar Tapestry, which is like a classic fantasy that I would also highly recommend reading. Um, but this one is the one I chose to recommend today, The Lions of al Rasan. And the reason I wanted to recommend this one is because I found this book to be so deeply moving. It's very philosophical in nature. This is a story that is rich in character development. It has a lot of emotional depth to it. I feel like it is probably one of Guy Gavriel Kay's best works out there. The Lions of al Rasan is a historical fantasy novel set in a world inspired by medieval Spain. The story centers around the fall of the Asherite rule in the fictional peninsula of al Rasan, as well as the rising power of the Jadite kingdoms. And the novel follows three main characters, including Rodrigo Belmont, who is a Jadite military leader, Amar, who is an Asherite poet, soldier, and diplomat, and Jehane, who is a Kindath physician. Now, obviously, the Asherite kind of represent Muslims, the Jadites represent Christians, and the Kindath re represent Jewish. Anyways, their paths cross in the city of Ragosa. They end up navigating a lot of political intrigue, as well as religious conflict and personal relationships, all amidst this big, like, holy war that's going on. Uh, these are characters that are going to form deep bonds of love and friendship, and they're very complex. And Kay's ability to write these, like, gut-wrenching scenes is so so, so good. This is a beautifully written narrative. It is also brutal at times. It really manages to capture like the tragedy of war. It also touches on a lot of deep themes like religion and philosophy and romance and history. And the characters here, they cross religious and ethnic divides to form these bonds. They're really complex characters. I feel like Kay always writes like really interesting characters that are very different from each other. Um, now, I will say this book, I feel like it had some pacing issues in the beginning. The beginning was a little bit slow for me, but then it does pick up eventually and 
It is such a great book. I highly recommend it. Also, people need to read more Guy Gavriel K. Next up, we have a very whimsical classic, and that is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. The Last Unicorn follows the journey of a unicorn who believes she is the last of her kind. Disturbed by the disappearance of other unicorns, she leaves her forest sanctuary to discover their fate. During her quest, she encounters a variety of characters and friends, including a bumbling magician and a bandit's wife. Together, they face many challenges and confront the malevolent King Haggard and the fearsome Red Bull, who are behind the disappearances of the unicorns. Also along the way, the unicorn is temporarily transformed into a human, forcing her to grapple the complexities of the human condition and mortality. If you haven't read The Last Unicorn, which a lot of people haven't still, it is highly, highly recommended. It is a very lyrical book, it's very charming. I feel like this could quickly become like a comfort book for many people. It seamlessly blends low humor and high fantasy, uh, and it appeals to a wide, wide audience. No matter what age you are, you can enjoy this book. The one uh, weakness I would say is the character development of the unicorn. I feel like it is a little bit weaker, but then again, this is much more of like a charming fairy tale story. I don't think it necessarily needs to focus on the character development. Not everything needs deep characters to be enjoyable, but that is just something I wanted to mention uh, so that you kind of know that going into it. Again, this is an incredibly charming book. It is also just a fantasy classic. I feel like everybody should give it a read because it's a book worth reading at least once. And like I said, it might just become a cozy favorite for you that you're gonna reread over and over again. And if you do, then you could come back and thank me. Okay, for this next one, we're gonna delve a little darker and talk about Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman. This is a medieval horror novel, and this is the second book I have read by Christopher Buhlman. The first was The Black Tongue Thief, and, and that one was much more classical fantasy. I really enjoyed that book a lot, and I wanted to explore more of Buhlman's writing. Now, I know he's written a lot of horror novels, and I heard a lot of great things about Between Two Fires. Once I started reading it, this was a really difficult book to put down. Even if you don't typically read horror novels, I feel like you can enjoy this one. It is a cross-genre masterpiece, honestly. It is a blend of fantasy, historical fiction, fairy tale, and horror all blent into a deadly margarita, and it is brilliant. This is truly such an amazing book, and uh, it's very emotional. It is an emotionally driven narrative that's all set between the beautifully decimated uh, landscapes of France. This is a, set, this is a historical fiction novel that is set in the 14th century during the Black Death. The story follows Thomas, a disgraced knight turned brigand who encounters a young girl named Delphine. She claims to have visions that reveal that the plague is part of a larger battle between heaven and hell, with Lucifer orchestrating frustrating events to overthrow God. Delphine claims to be able to see angels, and Thomas ends up joining her on this journey across the ravaged landscape of France, confronting both human and supernatural horrors as they seek to avert the apocalyptic war and seek redemption. This is really such a dark, like, offbeat narrative. It has a really eerie atmosphere. At the same time, though, I appreciate this book still has some hope in there. There is some hope for humanity, and it even delves into themes of redemption and stuff. Stuff, and I love to see that, even though there is like widespread despair and a lot of tragedy going on. It's still great to see some hope. And again, this is both a physical and a spiritual journey that is going on. It's it's a very emotionally resonant story. Also, whenever you have like a medieval horror novel, it always reminds me of Berserk, uh, the manga Berserk, or um, like the Dark Souls, like the FromSoft games, whether it's Dark Souls, Elden, Elden Ring, whatever. I feel like if you enjoy that type of atmosphere and that darkness to your fantasy, then you're going to enjoy Between Two Fires as well. Even if you don't, if you enjoy stories with complex characters and really dark, chilling, macabre settings uh, that still dive into themes of like redemption and hope, you need to read Between Two Fires. This book is honestly incredible. I really need to read more by Buhlman now. I plan on reading uh, The Daughter's War soon, which is like the prequel to The Black Tongue Thief. Now, I will say that Between Two Fires is not like jump scare horror. It's more like 
cosmic existential dread type of horror, especially if you're religious or, or you know some like religious history. I mean, this is a story of heaven and hell at war for humanity, uh, and with the with the cost being the eternal damnation of everyone. But in that's like in the background. It's mostly just about the characters. It's an epic that's told on a human scale. It is well worth a read. And those are five standalone fantasy novels that you need to read. Let me know all of your recommendations down in the comments. As always, a huge thank you to all my patrons and my channel members, and I'll see you soon.